Hello, this is God of Seven, and welcome to Crash Course C Sharp. In this series, you'll learn how to program in C Sharp and also do some neat stuff on the screen using the Mono Game Framework. In this video, I'll be covering how the series is organized and show you our very first program. What I'll do is in one video, I'll teach you a concept, give you a challenge to do on your own, and then go over the solution for that challenge in the next video. And then in the following video, I'll teach a new concept completing the cycle, and if that sounds confusing, then don't worry, it'll make sense when you go through these. But with that aside, let's get started. Now in order to start, you need to use what is called an Integrated Development Environment, or IDE for short. The most common ones for C Sharp are Visual Studio and Mono Develop. Visual Studio only works on Windows, but Mono Develop is multi-platform. I do prefer Visual Studio better though, so I will be using that during this course, but don't worry, you should be able to follow ahead using MonoDevelop just fine, as is not too different. Here's the download for Visual Studio here, and the download for MonoDevelop is over here. I will send the links in the description below, of course. So go ahead and open your IDE of choice. I'm going to go ahead and type in Visual Studio 2019, and we're going to go ahead and make a new project. I'm going to go ahead and hit Council App, make sure the language is in C Sharp. So Council App.NET Framework, C Sharp, and hit Next. You can name it whatever you like. For simplicity, I'm going to call it CCC1, as in Crash Course C Sharp 1. Very creative, I know. But once you do that, just go ahead and click Create. And if we were to go in whatever you created, you can see I have CCC1, and you have all these files here that were automatically generated by the IDE. And we won't have to deal with these now, but we may need to look at those later. Now the editor should have all this code stuff. Don't worry if it's just gibberish to you. We'll learn that later. Now the first thing we're going to do is learn the print command. Or in C sharp as it's known as right line. So I'm just going to go ahead and press the enter button a few times to make some space here. And what you do is type in console dot right line left parenthesis quotes like this and hello world. And then what's important is that you always end each statement with a semicolon just like that. And just like that, we have our very first line of code. Now let me explain the different parts of this. This part right here is the council, which is a class, more on that later, that represents the whole terminal of the program. And this right line writes a line to the council. In this case, it's surrounded by quotes, hello world, and every statement is finished with a semicolon to tell the compiler, hey, this statement is done, there's no more here. And that's about it. Now, I will explain why this is surrounded by quotes later, but for now, we're just going to say, you know, when you're quoting dialogue, you always put in quotes, so that's how it is in C Sharp. Obviously, that's not the true reason, but let's just say that is for now. So now what you want to go do is press the start button, and oh no, nothing happened. There's a window, but it just disappeared from existence. And why that happened is because when you press start up here, what it's doing is it's running the program, but then it's just finishing the program because there's nothing telling it to wait. So what we can do is console.read key, just like that. And what this is going to do is this is going to tell the console, hey, before you go ahead and close the program. You must wait till the user presses a key. It doesn't matter what key they press, but you must wait till they press a key. And so when we go ahead and press start, we see on the screen, hello world. Now if we go ahead and press the any key, that go ahead and disappears. So now you should hopefully have an understanding of the right line function and the read key function right here. And while well, that is not the true intention of the read key, we'll of course touch on that later. 
And so your challenge for today is to make this program right here say something else and print another line. It could be any type of line below it. I'll cover the solution to the next video. I hope you all enjoyed and I'll see you all later.